unless we fix what happens in classrooms, nothing is really going to fundamentally change. There are a lot of organizations today, large foundations, international and domestic, that will match your corporate pay. I think first it's understanding yourself and what you see as your career path. And just because here there are resources and there is technology, it just becomes so simple. You could have done anything. You could have been with you know, what our friends do at, at a hedge fund, the venture capital, private equity, investment banking. Why did you like, leave all of that and start a non-profit to help children learn? I think the only thing that was missing in all of this was a sense of happiness. Uh, I really was struggling to go to work um, every single day of my life, whether it was in America or in Bombay or back in Delhi, because I didn't enjoy what I did. Um, I had no passion for what I did. I couldn't care less whether I was at work or not. In fact, I'd find ways to not show up in the office because it was so boring. Um, so while the money was good and the job was secure and I would say, you know, life was kind of carrying on, there was absolutely no desire whatsoever. I think the sheer um, relative pointlessness of what I was doing sort of hit me, right? I was like, you know, what, what, what exactly am I doing? Right? I'm going to get up every morning, go do this, the company is excellent, you know, it's going to make a lot of money, I'll get rich, and then what? Uh, I will sit in another car and then drive to another office and then do the same thing in rinse and repeat, which to me uh, was not the most exciting thing I could do. And I think... Uh, if you like teaching and if you like working with kids, I think it's a little bit like a drug, right? So at, over time, I think just the draw of, I think one, being in India. Uh, two, being in India and being sort of connected to India, which our, I mean, your work and my work allows us to do, uh, I think was too much of an attraction to do the other thing. I think uh, kind of my passion was really to be in the development sector mm. and I knew that longer term that's where I saw myself mm. and specifically in education. Okay. Uh, but the turning point, I mean there were two things. Um, my son was born in 2009 and so you know there was of course um, seeing how he was growing and the experiences that he was receiving, the schools he was going to um, and the role that teachers had to play uh, in his development. And then in 2013 I was um, in my previous organization in the corporate sector, uh, the turning point was I was just being promoted to managing director. And so that was, um, that was a fairly significant uh, turning point because I had to kind of decide where I saw myself long term. Mm. Um, and at that point I said, well, if I really want to make the switch, I should do it at that point rather than 10 years later. In some ways, I think the prime of our careers has shifted, right? Uh, I think the prime of our careers, genuinely, I believe, is going to be in, when we are in our mid forties. Like that's by then we would have figured out life and hopefully be in a position where, and at least for me, I feel like you know we can do something really powerful. Um, and I think uh, even purely analytically, the way I view it is: look, I had these ten years, right, before I had children and you know all of that stuff, to really work on something which was intellectually deeply stimulating, which was. You know, I could really be amongst the people who has the forefront, forefront of solving a certain problem. Uh, and I can't think of a better setting than this, right? I think there is a bit of a myth when it comes to the social development sector. I think gone are the days where uh, the social sector is a sector where people give up. They give up what they were doing in their previous life. And I think it's still referred to as giving up. Uh, I gave up nothing. I gave up no lifestyle, I gave up no comforts, I gave up no luxuries. Um, in fact, I was uh, recruited and headhunted by a uh, search firm, uh, which was looking for somebody that had my kind of background. Somebody who had a management degree, somebody who had actually worked in corporate India and for that matter in corporate America, who brought rigor and discipline and culture and learning, uh, something that the development sector felt that they're lacking. I think the people who have been bestowed with an insurance yeah. 
that today, even if both of us go out and apply for jobs, we will get something. Yeah. You know, are the people who should take the biggest risks and yeah, do absolutely. something? If you think of FOMO, right? The, uh, the kind of uh, self-doubt I would have suffered from if I had continued on a path and never done this, despite having started the non-profit, being there, let's say, you know, I didn't do it, Krishna did it, somebody else did it, someone, something else happened. You know, 50 years from thinking, hey, you know, I had a chance to be on the, you know, on, on the ground floor for something and I didn't make that happen. I think the regret of not doing that in, in this space would have been far more than the regret of not having done that at the next, you know, big consumer internet startup. I think every young person will have to, you know, every person will be different and every person will have a different purpose in life um, and will want different things from life. And so I think first it's understanding yourself and what you see as your career path. I think there's no right time to enter the sector, right? I mean, I think if you are very passionate about it and you see this as um, the place to be, there are so many opportunities, right? There is so much exciting stuff that's happening, as you know. Um, but I think it really depends on every individual and what type of life experiences they want mm. to have. Mm. So some folks may want to try out the corporate sector for a while, like you and mm. I had done, right? Mm. And, and help, you know, and use that experience to build skills that they can bring back to mm. the development sector mm. or to education. I think that's the path that I took. And um, I honestly feel like the, the 19 years in you know, multilaterals and consulting firms um, in the finance space, all of those skills are skills that have prepared me for the role I'm playing right now. So I don't think there's a right time. I think it really depends on the person. But regardless of when the individual joins, um, there is just so much to do. You know, I think there's no bigger um, there's no bigger problem to solve right. than improving the quality of education for all kids in India. Being pioneering in this space uh, at this time, you know, when India has just solved the access problem and we're now trying to solve the quality problem and being at least in the room when this is happening, I think is really rare. It's a very, very rare opportunity, right? There's a, the good thing about being for profit is that there's a good chance we'll also make a lot of money of it. There's a chance that might happen. But even if that doesn't happen, right? Let's say even that doesn't happen, it's still a pretty exciting thing to have been part of, right? Right. Uh, I don't know how whether how you think about this, right? I think the comfort, though, and I think this is uh, part of the reason why I always am a little humbled by our own backgrounds, right? Which is that I think I, the part that allows me to sort of enjoy this without stress is the realization that look, you know, let's say this goes really badly, we are still going to be really wealthy, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I, don't, I, I like not denying that fact, right? The fact that, look, let's say this all goes to shit, right? For whatever reason. Um, or it doesn't work. Even if we someday have a change of heart and say, you know, uh, we would like to do something which was more traditional or, you know, make a lot more money, I, I don't think that option ever closes. After spending 25 years at Seva Mandir, when you joined the corporate social responsibility team of Coca-Cola, what What's your first day like? Like, what, what hit you the most? Like, you know, <laughs> how was that transition for you? I think we, uh, there's so much uh, we work on the basis of perception. So, uh, the not-for-profit sector has perception about the for-profit sector. And the, in turn, what I realized when I joined the CSR uh, sections of Weather Coke or any other company, I think you begin to realize that there are perceptions, equally strong perceptions on the other side about the not-for-profit sector. And that's a very humbling realization that uh, um, I may think I'm, you know, your cat's whiskers, but the world doesn't think that. And uh, unfortunate also at times that there is so much of a perception gap between the two realities uh, on both sides, I'm saying. So I used to always think that, you know, people in the not-for-profit sector are on a pedestal and they are, you know, uh, holy people, good people, uh, concerned people. Um, but when I went into the corporate world, I realized that as many number of as good people that I had met in the not-for-profit side, I met in the for-profit side. <laughs>